Hello and welcome back. New video about control engineering. Yeah? Last time we talked about how to uh, adjust our controller with the help of the body plot. Okay? And I said, yeah, we want to have some phase reserve, we want to have some amplitude reserve because we want to swing, we want to have this uh, frequency where we cross the one line as high as possible and then we have to find a trade-off. Okay. One of these trade-offs is called optimal amount. Yeah. Optimum amount, optimal amount, Betragsoptimum in German. What is behind this? I'm going to show you with the help of a Bode plot. Because for me this is the simpler approach. Yeah. There's also a mathematical approach. I will show you now the Bode plot. So let's have a look on the body plot. What do we see here? Do we see here? Move it a little bit in the middle. Yeah, also here. We do have the blue line. This shall be our, our system. This we want to control. Okay? This is this, this blue line here. This is the this is the phase diagram, and we see it's a PT2 system, system second order. Yeah. The damping is set to 5, the natural frequency is set to 1, and the gain is set to 4. This is why we have a 4, here around 1 is the natural frequency, and with the damping of 5 we do have these two bands. Okay. One band resulting in 0 0.1 and the other band is resulting at, zero, uh, at 10. Omega equals 10. So this is our system. And I want to control with the PI controller. The PI controller is this PI element here. Currently it's adjusted to 1 and 1. Yeah. Here is this PI element. The K is 1, this is why we are here 1, okay? And the TN is also 1, this is why we, the band frequency is here 1. And the result, yeah, the open loop transfer function, is the sum of both, yeah? the multiplication. Yeah? Multiplication, and it's the green line, the dark green line here. This would be the sum. If this controller is working on this system, we end up in this open loop transfer function. Here we see the phase diagram of the open loop transfer function. Here we see, here we're crossing one and we have a phase reserve of my, uh, okay, not that good. Yeah, It's here we're at minus 140, so we are at 40 degree phase reserve. That's, that's my system. Okay. I have here a little, uh, I have here a little thing yeah, where we can simulate a little program. Yeah. And you see, I have exactly done the same. This is, this is my PT2 here. This is my PT2 system yeah, with K4 damping 5 and omega n is 1, yeah? so exactly this PT2 system. Here I do have my controller and it's set to K1 and Tn1. Here I can only adjust Kn, this is the reverse part of Tn. Oh, we will see. So this is the adding. This is our reference value, yeah, our wanted W value. Yeah? This is the sum, and this X, XD is the difference, the regulating difference. This is my control loop. Here I have just also added uh, to be able to, to do some disturbance. Okay. Currently the disturbance is set to zero. Let's have a look what is the result of this. Simulate this. Huh? Takes a little while. Now we see it looks like this. 
make it a little bit bigger. Okay. So here, this blue line, this jump, is jumping from zero to one, and the red line is my is my regulated value. Okay, it's going up very high up to I don't know one dot thirty five to thirty five percent over swing, and then swing into it to take thirty seconds until we reach. At least it's stable. Okay, at least it's stable. We have seen it stable because we have phase reserve, yeah? and because the phase reserve is not that high. We expected this swingy behavior. Okay. Now I tell you, it's a good idea that the uh, open loop transfer function, this here, looks like an IT1 element. Okay. Looks like an IT1 element. So what I actually need to do is to put this band of the PI controller exactly at this at this band here yeah, of the first of the lower time constant of the PT2. Yeah. So this is 0 0.1. So if I put Tn to 10 back here you see now this is running smoothly through. Yeah. Now it looks like a IT1 element, this open loop transfer function. Okay. Now, let's see if I do this here also. So, Tn is 10, this means Kn, here you see it's 1 divided by Tn, I must adjust it to 0 0.1 to have Tn1, yeah. and let's have a look, book, what is the result? Ooh, much better, okay, much better. We could have been already satisfied, yeah? but we know yeah? now we have here a phase reserve of almost 90 degree and we want to get this up, 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 yeah? this omega n. So we want to have a trade-off between, between this, this omega where we punch the one line and, and our phase reserve. So I could push this IT1 element a little bit up. I can do this by adding gain to my controller. If I do hit with 2, we see it's moving up. Let's see on our simulator what it means if I do this. So I adjust this K to 2 now. Book. Simulate. Ah! We are faster. We are faster. This is what we expected. Yeah? We are faster and we don't even see if it's not that stable anymore. By the way, the green line here, this is the uh, regulating difference. Okay? Regulating difference. Looks good. Looks good. But where to go? Where to go with my K? I tell you, it's a, to have an optimal amount controller. Yeah? We want to have it at the half frequency of this band of the IT1 element, of the open loop IT1 element. Yeah? This band is at 10. Yeah? 10 seconds. 10 per second. Yeah? Omega. So I want to punch the uh, one line, not at 10, but at the half. And that's now the rule. Yeah? I want to punch it at uh, 5. Hmm? Where am I now? Let's go back to 1 here. Then we are exactly at this, at the same location as the PT1, uh, PT2 element. Okay? The PT2 element is here at 4. At 0 0.1, it will bend and going down. Yeah. And here we are at 4, yeah. at 10 times, 100 times more frequency 
okay? 100 times more frequency where we end up here. Yeah? If we are at here at 4, we are at here at 4 divided by 100. Yeah? Because I have 100 times more frequency, so I have only the hundredth part of the gain anymore. Yeah? So it's 4 divided by 100. It's here. Okay? And at the half frequency, I'm not at 4 divided by 100, I'm at 2 divided by 100. At 8, sorry. Of course, at 8. Yeah? Because I have then double, double things. Yeah? So I'm here, I am at 8 divided by 100 at frequency 5. So, where I have to go with my gain, if I want to have 8 divided by 100 to be 1, the gain must be 100 divided by 8. And 100, this is my small calculator, <laughs> make it smaller. So, let's 100 divided by 8 is 12.5. If I adjust here to 12.5, then I'm touching exactly at the frequency of 5, at the half frequency of this band here, yeah? I'm punching the one line. And this should be optimal, I tell you. Yeah? Optimal amount. Let's see what this is doing in our simulation. Okay? So I said 12.5. 12.5, okay, simulate. Ooh. Pretty neat, right? It's, I mean, it only takes some seconds. Ooh, we have to zoom in here a little bit to see what is happening. Nice. Yeah. We have a little bit of overswing, okay? But in 2.5 seconds before we take, it took quite a time. Yeah? We have a little bit of overswing. Why is this overswing? This overswing is because here we now have a little bit less phase reserve. Yeah? But we are much, much faster as we see. Yeah? It only takes 2.5 seconds until we reach it, before it took 10 seconds. Yeah? We had no overswing, right. Yeah? But, you know, this is how an optimal amount, uh, optimal amount controller is working. Yeah, we have a little bit of overswing, but it will go very smooth, very fast to the desired value. Looks good. Yeah? Optimal amount. You could say, yeah, hey. But why do we use here a PT, an IT1 element? Why not just an I element and I can shift it to everywhere? Mm -hmm. Well, the best answer I can tell you about is that our, our uh, models are not real. Yeah? It's not really a PT2 element. It's always a PTN element. Yeah? So there are maybe two time constants which are uh, the ones which I see, but up here somewhere there are smaller time constants and it will simply bend down. Yeah? It, will, it will always go very steep down in the end. Yeah? And so I deal with the ones I know and say, okay, the upper one I do not compensate because I know somewhere even up there are more and more and more and don't, I don't know exactly where this is. Yeah? So I say, I take the ones I know, and if this is stable, the ones above are not influencing. This is the idea behind why we should use an IT1. IT1 is open loop controller. Okay. Yeah, so our reaction on change of the desired value, 
change of the reference value, reference value transfer function, looks very nice. Looks very nice. Let me see. Now let's have a look what is happening if we want if we do disturb the system a little bit. Huh? Here I now turn on the disturbance. I only set it to 10%. Yeah? At 50 seconds. After 50 seconds, I added disturbance. Okay. Let's see what is happening here. Rescale. Aha. Here we see a disturbance is appearing, and this disturbance will get lost over time. Yeah. Maybe zoom a little bit in here. Small change. Doesn't really matter. Huh? Disturbance signal will disturb, but disturbance will be it will go away. It's also good. Hmm? Also good. So we have a good uh, reference transfer function. We have a good disturbance transfer function. Everything fine, we would say. Huh? Well, this is for PT2. PT2. Uh, control system yeah. with a PT2 control system PT2 control system I can uh, compensate the lower time constant uh, with my PI controller okay but what about uh, what about systems where they are not where they're integrating itself yeah let's say we have a system which already has an IT1 behavior Okay, let's say this. So I'm not using here a PT2 element, I'm using an IT1 element. This is my IT1 element. To bring... So I'm using another PT2 element, I'm using an IT1 element, I said, here. How does this look now? Yeah. Well. With a PI controller, not that good. I will bring down the PI controller again to one. Yeah. And here we see, oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah. Does not really look perfect. Yeah. We can simulate this one. Yeah. We can simulate this one. I've prepared this. Yeah. I've prepared this, IT1 element okay oh, okay no 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 this i did not want no disturbance please okay uh pi controller was one and ten k1 and here 10 is for zero dot one okay and here we have and integrate in a PT1 element, PT1 element time constant 1, this fits, and integrator 0 0.1 fits also. Okay, so let's simulate this. Okay, does not look that steady. Okay, the reason is I only make it worth the PI controller. Okay, I only make it worse, you see, because here we have a phase reserve of zero, here it's going up maybe a little bit and down, yeah, and if I want to have a total transfer function of, uh, sorry, open loop transfer function of an IT1 element, and I have an IT1 element as controller, so I just need a P controller, right, just need a P controller, I don't care about the I part of the controller. So take away the I part of the controller and just use a P controller. This one, P controller. Don't use the PI controller, use the P controller. How does it look like? The P controller, I set now to K1. Here's the controller. Here is now our our loop and also our open loop transfer function because the controller is now simply gain of one. 
let's see what is the result. Yeah. So eliminate the eye part, duck. Mm. Does not really look much better. Yeah. Because here where we punch the one line, okay, here where we punch the one line, I have really low phase reserve. Yeah. This is why we see this swinging here. Yeah, because the phase reserve here is that low, which swings. But with the gain, I can get it down. And here the band is at 1. And at band 1, I have a gain of 10. Okay. At the half frequency, 0 0.5, I have the double gain, what is 20, actually. Okay. So, I need to get this point here down by the factor of 20, whoop, down here. Okay. So, 1 divided by 20, 1 divided by 20 is 0 0.05. So, if I adjust here a gain factor of 0 0.05, yeah, we see this is our control system here, this is our open loop, this is now pulled down, and here I'm punching at a lower, lower, uh, or a higher phase reserve actually, yeah? with more phase reserve. Hmm. Let's also adjust this here, parameter, 0 0.05, okay, simulate. Ah, looks like before, looks like before, yeah, we have a little bit overswing, around 4-5% and then going down, ooh, I'm satisfied. So it's also working with an IT1 control system. Yeah? This time I just have to use a P controller, okay, I have to use the P controller, yeah. but not, then it seems to work. Let's have a look on so let's have a look also on the disturbance. Yeah? So the reference transfer function looks okay. Yeah? Let's have a look at the disturbance. Let's add again the same disturbance as before. 0 0.1 at 50 seconds. Yeah? Simulate. <laughs> Does not look that good, I would say. Yeah? You see, small disturbance. Before we saw nothing, a yeah, little bit. Yeah. And now the disturbance is not disappearing. Yeah. So even if here in the open loop transfer function everything looks perfect, and also as we see the reference transfer function, perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Good, yeah. but the disturbance transfer function, it will not disappear. It is not disappearing. A disturbance will lead to permanent, permanent error. That's not good. Yeah. So, if we do have an integrational part in our, in our system, it's a little bit more tricky cannot just use a P controller. Yeah? Not on all systems. Okay? What is happening on the mathematical side? I'm going to show you, yeah? but on a sheet. Okay, so let's have a look what is happening. Okay, let's have a look what is happening. We do have a system transfer function of a bit of an IT1 element we said. Yeah. IT1 element was 1 divided by STI 1 plus ST1 yeah. IT1 yeah. and our controller our regulator transfer function was K yeah. some K yeah. because it's a P controller and then we end up in an IT1 element and we can shift it and can make an optimal amount uh, 
controlled system, we said. Okay. Let's have a look at the open loop transfer function, FO, from it. This is actually FR multiplied by FS. Yeah. And in this case, it's rather easy. K divided by STI 1 plus ST1. Okay. Well, let's remember what was our transfer function of the reference value. Our reference value transfer function, this was FO divided by 1 plus FO. Okay. Let's see, this is K divided by STI 1 plus ST1 and I am big 1 plus K divided by STI 1 plus ST1. Okay. Let's get rid of this double. Auf Wiedersehen. Ja. So we end up with k divided by k plus STI 1 plus ST1. Okay. I'm not considering now our adjustments. Ja. If we select k in a proper way, yeah, we see that this is working good. We have seen this in the simulation. Our, what actually is interesting is that our x, our regulated value, yeah, is our reference value multiplied by this reference transfer function, right? If our reference value is a jump, then this, a jump, in Laplace area, it's 1 divided by s. Yeah. So this, with this formula, I could calculate the jump response. Okay. Exactly what we've seen. And with the end value theorem, end value theorem yeah, of the Laplace, somewhere in distance future of my regulated value is the same like if I go to zero s multiplied by xs. Yeah, this is the end of the theory. Let's use this one. Yeah. So it's Lemus s going to zero. Yeah. S multiplied one divided by s fw from s. So actually it's s going to zero. Okay. What does it mean? It's Lemus s going to zero, k divided by k plus STI, 1 plus ST1. If s is going to zero, this is going to be zero, so we ended at k divided by k, and this is 1. Woo, this is exactly what we want to see. Yeah? The transfer from the desired value to the actual value is 1 somewhere in the future. So we'll reach the end value, this means. Good, check, we have seen this. Yeah. We have seen this, Some, depending on k, sometimes with more swing, sometimes with less swing, but in the end we reach it. Okay. Now let's have a look at the disturbance transfer function. This time it's not FO, it's the system up here. 1 plus FO. It's pretty much the same calculation. Yeah? This time I have above here this one. There is no K anymore. Yeah? STI. But the, the rest is exactly the same like before. 1 plus. And here we have this K. STI. 1 plus ST1. Okay. So we end up actually here. 1 divided by k plus STI, 1 plus ST1, okay. same trick in the middle, good. Yeah. Now let's do the same, let's say our XS 
is now our disturbance multiplied by the disturbance transform function and our disturbance shall also be a jump. Yeah? So our xs is jump into disturbance multiplied by disturbance transfer function. Let's calculate the jump response on a disturbance. Again, we will use the end value theorem, the end value theorem. So we want to see if our disturbance will get we will get rid of our disturbance somewhere in distance future. Yeah? S multiplied by xs. Yeah? This is again s going to zero, s multiplied one divided by s, and now this time fz from s. This is Lehman's s going to zero, fw from s. Ah, fz, of course. Yeah? I just looked here. fz, fz. Yeah? What does it mean? This is Lehman's s going to zero from one divided by k plus sti, 1 plus st1. This is going to be 0, so it's 1 divided by k. Ooh, yeah. Not that perfect. Okay. We will not get rid. We want to have this 0. Yeah? Disturbance transfer function is 0. And we are not... We cannot get rid of it. Yeah? A disturbance will never disappear. This is the reason. Yeah. Mathematical approach, and we have seen this. We have seen this also on our uh, simulation. Cannot do anything about it. Sad. <laughs> this means actually. This means actually that uh, this optimal amount for integrational uh, systems is not really working out. Okay, This means this is a little bit tricky. Yeah? We have to do something else. Yeah? Something else is symmetrical optimal. Yeah? But this will then be in the next video, not in this video anymore. Okay? For this video I really think it is enough. Anyway, thank you very much for listening and goodbye. See you next time.